Moving across the house again, we have Dr. Eamon Butler. Mr. Butler is an economist and author who's the co-founder and director of a leading free market think tank, the Adam Smith Institute. He's written extensively about social and economic policy, and his books include A Classical Liberalism, A Primer, and The Economics of Success. Dr. Eamon Butler, you have our attention. Uh, thank you very much indeed. Um, we've heard a lot about uh, politics uh, uh, in this debate, but not very much, uh, I think, about free market economy. Um, let me, uh, well, let me, let me start by just saying that I was, um, I was cleaning out the attic the other day, and I came across uh, lots of old maps and things, uh, and I came across an old uh, lamp. And it was rather tarnished, so, so I, I gave it a bit of a polish. And suddenly a genie appeared. And uh, the genie said, you have one wish. I'm feed, feeding back. Uh, you have one wish. And I said, I thought, uh, I, I, thought, I thought we were allowed three. And the genie said, well, it's a time of austerity. You're allowed one. So uh, I said, all right, one, one. And I was looking at the old maps, and I was saying, well... Um, I wish uh, that uh, you could bring peace to the Middle East. And the genie said, oh, don't be silly. They've been fighting each other for 3,000 years. There's, not even I can do anything about that. So I said, all right, well, um, if I'm allowed one wish, I would like everybody who opposes free markets uh, to come up with some alternative that works. And the genie said, uh, let me take another look at that map. Because uh, you, can debate, you can debate theory, no, you can debate theory, or you can debate reality. I'm very happy to talk about the theory of free market, and I'm very uh, happy to talk about the theory of socialism. And, uh, you know, I believe I can win that argument. I'm very willing to talk about the reality of socialism and the reality of free markets. What I'm not prepared to do is to have your um, sky is blue, sun's out, uh, birds are singing in the trees, theoretical uh, program pitted against how markets have actually turned out in the real world with all of that politics around them. Um, so I want to get back to the actual motion under discussion, which people don't seem to have uh, addressed. Freedom. Freedom, to me, implies that you have a constitutional government, you have the rule of law, independent judiciary, all of these things are essential uh, for uh, freedom, free press, property rights, civil liberties. Democracy is all about bringing peaceful change uh, of government through the will of the people. Now, in, in, let me just finish this point. In practice, which countries are nearer to these ideals of freedom and democracy? They're countries like the UK, uh, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, uh, Netherlands, Norway, Denmark, Sweden, Spain. Interesting, all of those are constitutional monarchies. But you can add in uh, all of the republics in, in Western Europe and many other places, and then the only thing they have in common is that they're all market economies. In practice, the market economy is not the enemy of freedom and democracy. In practice, the free market is their staunchest ally. And, yeah, sure. Well, in reality, those states are democratic. They have welfare states. The states are unrestricted monopoly of the oligarchs. Well, um, there's much less to that argument than meets the eye. Um, the, I, I want to come on to, to that point, and, and, and would you forgive me if I, if I just said I'm, I'm going to come on to that later? Um, the market economy supports democracy at its most basic level. Um, it returns the decision-making power uh, to individuals. People can make their own choices about what to sell or buy, what to, where to work, uh, where, where to live. They don't have to accept the dictates of politicians. They can decide and run their own lives. The market economy is not the, the free market. It's not the enemy of freedom. It implies freedom. It is freedom. It supports freedom. Uh, yeah. Okay. 
uh, <laughs> it seems to me uh, it seems to me that there is uh, plenty of choice in the market. Um, Femme was, was talking about, oh, well, there's only so many big uh, news media. But then he was saying, that's why people are turning to social media. Right. That's the problem solved then, isn't it? Because the, you, you've got the variety of different uh, media that you, you can go to. So there's no problem about it. Don't be misled by this argument that free markets are somehow a, a Wild West lawless werewolf greed for profit and monopoly. Like any an institution, free markets have rules. They have rules of justice and the rule of law. Uh, that's what makes them beneficial to us. Uh, they have rules about not defrauding people, not stealing from them. Rules to protect competition. That's essential to a free market economy. Uh, to, to protect comp competition against, obviously, crony capitalism, uh, capitalists who would love to use government power in order to get a monopoly but also overweening governments who want to take a monopoly into their own hand. Free markets do not use state power to thwart competition and choice and control people's lives. Free markets are all about freedom of choice. Uh, the democratic exercise, if you like, of choice by people themselves, not telling them how to live. And remember, too, as uh, Lord Lilly pointed out, that just in the last 30 years... Markets have lifted a billion people out of subsistence poverty, from squalor to lives full of promise, from dependency to choice. Wealth, wealth itself fuels uh, the demand for democracy. Free markets create wealth. Wealth fuels the demand for democracy. Democracy is the product of economic freedom, not its enemy. Sorry. Who was that? Oh, can't see you for the light. That's true, because, yeah, the, and the reason for that is, thank you for dimming the lights, whoever did that, it's very clever. Uh, the, uh, because after 1991, basically, the world opened up to free trade, and China was part of that, India was part of that, Eastern Europe was part of that. That's what made them boom, right? That's what, what gave them wealth, it gave them dignity. No, no, I've, I've finished that point. Um, now, nobody's saying that real world markets are perfect. They're very far from it. They're very far from my ideal. No human institution is perfect. And there are still protectionists out there, and there are still politicians who indulge them. But that, to me, is not what a free market is. Uh, but even, even then, looking at the practicality, even the stifled, hampered markets that we've got, with all these regulations and rules and, and government intervention, is still better than the practical alternative. And uh, as Peter Lee said, every attempt to replace economic freedom uh, with something else has ended in failure, and quite often in mass murder uh, and starvation as well. Free markets work with human nature, not against it, with what Adam Smith called the constant, uniform and uninterrupted effort of every person to better their condition. Far from being the enemy of freedom and democracy, the market economy has promoted freedom and democracy and underpinned freedom and democracy. It's doing that today and it will continue to do that tomorrow. So my, my message here is that the free market is actually one of the best things that human beings have ever discovered. I don't think we invented it, but we discovered it. Uh, and nothing has ever proved better. That's the practical reality. If you think that you've got something better, well, I've got a genie in the attic who wants to hear from you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Butler.